Okay. I just went and moved some heavy things, so I apologize if you could hear my breathing really heavy on this video. Well, in the beginning, anyway. I was watching one of my other videos and I could hear a lot of my breathing and it was getting annoying for for me even so <laughs> you can imagine what it's like for you guys the microphone is really close so I've got to watch that anyway I'm going to reduce the edge a little bit dress it up with pressure now this is going to be a little bit larger than uh, Harold's normally are uh, for this area but uh, I'm in the in the mode of making hunting points so those are a little bit larger than uh, the real ones this is not quite an inch wide yeah it'll be about three quarters when I'm done I'll lose about a sixteenth probably or maybe even an eighth probably an eighth of an inch But if I, you know, if I start working really, really small points, and then I get into making more hunting points, uh, it's it's difficult for me to to uh, adjust for that. It's easier to adjust down than it is to adjust upward as far as size. Okay. It just it'll take me more time when I'm doing my hunting points. Takes about a, I don't know, two or three napping sessions to make the transition, and in two sessions I can make a, a set of twelve hunting points. So I just wasted that time. And that doesn't apply to everybody. I mean, some, you know, I, uh, I like to work without thinking too much. But it, other guys, you know, you can make the transition probably easier than I can, or you make it easier just because that's your style of napping. You're always um, thinking during the napping. But for me, I don't like to think too much. I like to get to the point where it's second nature. For me it speeds up the process and also uh, it also helps me with the uh, ADD I think. <laughs> I, I have trouble concentrating. If I'm always thinking on how to do this and uh, always focusing every minute it's very hard for me. Uh, my brain changes the channels on me all the time. And, uh, I think my napping reflects that. I do mainly random flaking because my brain is pretty random. Anyway, doing a sequential patterned flaking technique on a very precise preform drives me completely bonkers. Because it just requires so much mental control. You know, my brain could change the channel and then I have to stop for a second and then refocus. Anyway.
I'm just looking at symmetry. see that probably not a good color choice okay there's a book back there I know some of you guys are trying to read that show you two in a second okay what this is is a uh, book on uh, Stone Age spear and arrow points of the southwestern US by the by Noel Justice and I've got it turned to a page that has what they call a Pueblo side notch cluster and uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, archaeologists use the word cluster to group different point styles. It just means a group of different point styles, and they're all classified as Pueblo side notched varieties of one type or another. Anyway, I just want to give you an idea how thin these are. Now, this is an actual size. And you can see uh, most of most of the points around here are, are of this size here in West Texas. These are from, uh, doesn't say down here, but they're probably from Arizona. This one is, these over here are from Walnut Canyon. But anyway, this is going to be reduced further on the sides, but not too much on the length. But just look at the thinness on these, on the real ones. The uh, the herald is related to these types. You can see I got a ways to go. This one is uh, 34.23. The reference is on the other page. 34.23. It's called a ridge ruin side notch. Uh, Pedernal Church, which is what this is. Uh, Magician's Burial, Ridge Run, Coconino County, Arizona. Okay, Arizona. So if this, if it's made of Pedernal Church, it's uh, either a long way from home or they also have Pedernal Church in Arizona. Couldn't tell you. Anyway, I'm going to try to make this extremely thin and a lot more narrow right now. It's excellent material other than the fact that it likes to dive. Other than that, it's excellent material. I've got enough thickness for two more thinning passes. Each thinning pass removes but a uh, I don't know, one thirty-second of an inch on this on this size, but you'll get used to that over time on how much thinness you actually uh, lose on different point sizes. The thickness of the flakes that you're removing varies with the size of the flake. The larger the flake, the more thickness you'll remove in general. There are some guys that can make extremely thin, very long, wide flakes. That is what you, what you want to achieve eventually as a flint napper. Uh, but in general, the uh, larger the flake, the thicker it is. The smaller the flake, the thinner it is. And you can judge how much you can thin these things down in preparation for the final pass or 
a series of passes. Hope that makes sense. But I'll get into the, like I said, I'll get into the flaking styles and techniques later. I just want to make a harrow point right now. Try to make it as thin as I can. And I'll tell you what's going on in my thought process as I'm doing it. Probably more of a 64th of an inch in thickness as far as flake thickness right now. Some of you might be wondering, uh, why haven't I figured out how to get the flakes to stop stepping right there in the middle? Uh, it's because I don't mind them stepping in the middle right now. Uh, I'm not trying to run full length or edge to edge flakes right now. It, there's too much of a chance for overshots and all that, so um, I don't really care that they stop in the middle. Oh, there's techniques where I could either apply even pressure all the way across to try to get those flakes to run a little bit smoother and feather out better at the termination, but it's just a lot of work. I guess I've gotten to the point where I can easily do the damage control to take that out, so I'm not worried about it. It also gives the center some strength so I can really smack the end and not worry about the bending forces ruining my point. So I've got thickness in the middle. It's one lesson I've learned from Cody points. Like the Edens and the Scotts Bluffs, they all maintain a very thick center or midline. So I think they were doing a lot of percussion all the way up to the very end on the edges or heavy pressure with lots of bending forces. Something that it created a lot of bending forces in the point as they were making them, so they preferred a very strong midline. Okay. Anyway, I've been reading way too much. the more I figure out that I don't know very much at all. So I just read more. 
and more and more and it gets to the point where I gotta stop investing all this money in books and actually just do more napping. Losing a little bit too much of that white cortex, but just a little bit more thinning on the base, and I'm going to leave it alone. It just thin from the sides after that, and maybe one more little thinning pass as a very last step on the base. Theoretically, I could finish this whole point from here on in with pressure. And I think that's what a lot of guys would do. And it's all, it was also done in the past. I'll show you. Now this is the one that I'm comparing mine to. I'm probably not going to be able to get it that thin. But anyway, as you can see, there's some large flake removals uh, bowl flaking on this one, but on this one here, there's a lot of pressure. Now this is the uh, this is what you want as far as your skill in napping. 
you want to be able to create smooth, lenticular, very thin pieces with pressure. It's very difficult to do and this looks like sequential pressure too so that's a very high degree of skill. Uh, in other words a lot better than me. <laughs> Let's see 34.22. This one is a ridge ruin side notch pedernal chert. Uh, same as the one same location as the other one. So these were found together in the same location. There's quite a bit of range in size as you can see. And proportions are, are pretty good. The thickness proportions are pretty good. So what they were after is uh, with the thickness ratio, uh, it's pretty consistent. Looks like to me anyway. So they weren't, in other words, they weren't pushing the limits of the material. Whereas if this were as thin as that, that's really pushing the limits of the material. But they didn't do that. They were just looking for, you know, very nice even lenticularity, very straight edge. And uh, when, when you do that, it's easy to resharpen. It's very sharp, very, very um, effective uh, when it's finished. And like I said, very easy to resharpen. So that. This may have actually started this size, but I doubt it. I think they were made that size to begin with. Okay. A lot of discussion on this one. So I could do the rest of this with pressure, but I'm not. I'm going to use a combination of pressure and percussion. Wherever I think I need, I need to take a large flake, I'll use percussion. And I'm getting ready to stop the video here before it hits 30 minutes. It's at 22 right now. So I can take a break, get some water, and come back and do the final thinning. I'm just preparing the edge right now for some percussion. I want to do some percussion on here. I'm basically creating a beveled edge. Which is one form of uh, continuous platform. It'll be beveled on both sides. And this material is good for that. Gives you a nice, even, consistent flaking. If you notice, some of you guys might notice this, but a lot of the Paleo Folsom type points had flaking similar to this on the sides of their of their points. And all that is is. Uh, you have a very consistent thickness if it's flat and you start driving really short flakes on this very uh, consistent material you'll get those nice pretty side by side flakes it's really not that big of a deal as long as you have the right material and the right cross section and a sharp tool hard sharp tool
it just takes a lot of patience if you want to get very consistent results. And the sharper your tool, the better. Right now, mine's kind of rounded off. Well, it is rounded off. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get a drink of water.